Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler again. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit. Uh, usually I do my weekly Arctic report on Friday. Now those of you paying attention to the cal calendar will note that it is Thursday. But there is, there's a bit of a, an ongoing trend for the Arctic that has been picked up by a couple of GFS models that that I'm a little concerned about, and and it's it's certainly not something that's that's set in stone. So I I want you to take it with a grain of salt, but but it is something that I want to kind of stick a pin in. But before I do. I'd like to talk about a gentleman by the name of Guy Walton, who is a former Weather Channel weather guy and who has a, a very interesting blog called The Extreme Temperature Diary. And Guy has been working really hard to keep track of global temperature records and, and overall human-caused climate change related signals and he is also very active on Twitter so I encourage you to to take a look at Guy's page. I, I like to try and promote those whom I, I feel are contributing to the conversation on climate change in a positive way and in a scientific way and, and Guy is certainly one of those. Now I'm just going to pull a little piece out of Guy's blog for today to serve as a starting point. Now, one of the extreme weather features that we have seen this year for this summer is a, is a very severe warming and, and severe drought and severe wildfires in Europe. And unfortunately, the forecast is showing that the, the heat dome is, is starting to build back in, and this could reinforce more record high temperatures for Europe and again increase wildfire risks and impacts to, to farmers and agriculture and forests and rivers and lakes and streams across Europe. And so this is, this is something to keep an eye on. Now, now, what does this have to do with the Arctic? And I'm going to go ahead and, and take a look at the global temperature anomaly map provided by Climate Reanalyzer as, from the perspective of, of the North Pole. And I want to call your attention to a number of ridge zones or high pressure zones that are currently generating extraordinary heat in the Arctic edge zone. And, and these zones include the European heat dome that the guy was pointing out and, and a related high temperature pattern in, in Western Siberia and the North American heat dome over the US West, which is funneling much warmer than normal temperatures into Alaska and into the Arctic. And a third region where we've seen a lot of heat recently, but but has, has faded out a bit in, in central Siberia. Now, in the winter time, we we tend to look at ridge zones and energy transfer zones as a signal for polar amplification, and, and these ridge zones typically transfer. A, a, a monumental load of heat into the Arctic during winter time as, as a signal of human-caused climate change and, 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 and warm the Arctic quite a lot relative to the, the rest of the globe. And, and this feature is known as polar amplification. Now, polar amplification tends to moderate during the summertime due to the ocean effect. And and primarily during winter time, you tend to see a lot of energy transfer over the oceans. Now, this signal switches in summer to the continents and tends to focus most of the heat on the Arctic edge zone, 
while the high Arctic tends to, to moderate a bit or, or even remain somewhat cooler than average. Now, what I'm going to look at is, is this forecast that, that seems to indicate that, that some of the excess heat that is occurring in these edge zones through these, these heat domes may bleed into the Arctic over the coming 10 days. And we'll go ahead and advance this anomaly model run so that you can see what's expected. So as we see the, the heat in, in Europe and Western Siberia is expected to build, the heat over Northwestern North America is expected to build, some above average temperatures are expected to remain in central Siberia and the adjacent Arctic Ocean region. And I want to go ahead and call your attention to sea ice free regions in the Chukchi Sea, which are showing above average temperatures due to continued sea ice reduction and reduced sea ice in the Laptev Sea, also associated with somewhat above normal temperatures in the Arctic Ocean region. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop this anomaly model run, and, and of course this is an anomaly run. It's, it's showing temperatures, ten, temperature departures from normal in the form of red, orange to red for, for high temperatures, and blue for, for lower than normal temperatures. And, and what we see is, is a bit of bleed out into these Arctic Ocean zones. And it, so for example, in the Beaufort Sea here, and in the Laptev Sea, in the Chukchi Sea, in the East Siberian Sea, and in the region near Svalbard. And though this, this bleed out doesn't look anywhere near as dramatic as it tends to during winter time, these above normal temperatures can have a, a bit of a, of a dilated effect on, on sea ice during summertime. And I'll just note that the expected Arctic temperatures, uh, temperature anomalies for for the, for the entire Arctic are, are 1.1 degrees Celsius above average for August 1st. Now, that's a rather high departure for summertime, so, so it's something that, that we want to keep an eye on. Now, I'm going to go ahead and keep advancing this, uh, this model a bit so you can see some of this bleed out continue. Note the, the Beaufort Sea region in particular and the Barents Sea region in adjacent in, in, in association with these, these heat domes that, that continue to build over Europe. And, and notice how this heat tends to encroach uh, a bit more on the high Arctic. So, so a signal to, to keep an eye on. I'm going to take a look at this. So, so 1.4 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures for the Arctic in summer is 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 pretty extraordinary. So, so something to keep an eye on. Well, thank you for joining me and listening to this this I guess you could call it a an alert. It's it's or, or, or a warning to stay alert to to conditions in the Arctic and and look for a potential for for more rapid sea ice losses over the coming days, ten days, if this pattern emerges as predicted. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.